Good evening to all of you folks in the audience, administration, and the rest of the council. It's a chilly evening, but we'll make do, I guess. If we might, Ms. Burner, maybe we have uh, a roll call when yes. you're ready. Yes, Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Shammy. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. Seven members. And tonight's invocation will be done by Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all the many blessings and many favors. We pray that you would have your hand in this meeting and let thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops overseas, their family, and our citizens. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What do we do to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all? And we need action on the minutes of uh, the regular meeting on 1-2. So do I hear a motion? Eggleston and Mr. Groom. Good call. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. And it's accepted 7 0. Uh, yes. Did I forget you? Yes. I did. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I was so worried about making sure I called everybody the correct thing. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Thank you. Okay, under um, the communi <coughs> communications, we have a, I need a motion to accept the acting clerk of council resignation. Apparently, Ms. Sexton, after agreeing to the assistant clerk of council, has withdrawn her acceptance. So I assume we need a motion to accept that resignation. Am I correct? Yes. So moved. Sorry. Okay, Mrs. Eggleton and Tammy. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Motion passes. In regards Zero. to that, uh, I have made a couple of inquiries, and I believe <coughs> Kathy possibly may also have another one we're talking to. I do have a neighbor who's interested in doing it. I don't know that she could do it 100% of the time but I'm pretty sure she could. I asked her to get an application. I don't know if she's turned that in or not. I don't know. Can I have so the, last, the last name? Do you, huh? know, do you know her um, last name? Yeah, I do. Um, oh, no. Yeah, we'll I will get later. in a minute. We'll, we'll text me or we'll, we'll talk later. Sorry. No, you're good. Thank you. Grow. Grow is her last name. Do you art like grow? Yeah, like grow. It's Rose Grow, of course. Mm. Isn't that interesting? It's pretty cool. Are there any other communications or committee reports that I'm not aware of? So I guess we'll move on to city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor Cook, members of council, members of the public, uh, city manager report. Our planning and zoning mayor's court, they will resume at the uh, next meeting on February 5th. Uh, that did not get um, uh, emailed in time, so we do apologize about that. And we'll stick on with our police report, and I'll give the stats on that real quick. Now, there are 323 calls taken, 58 reports given, uh, 64 assists, 12 criminal arrests, one felony arrest, nine misdemeanor arrests, two warrants, 34 traffic stops, 24 traffic warnings, 10 moving citations, 1,712 business checks, 13 code enforcement follow-ups, four traffic crashes, 
and five parking citations. Any questions on the police stats? Any questions in regard to the uh, Sheriff's Department? Uh, and one more update with the police department. As we had stated earlier, I'm going to see um, how the weather goes and probably around spring start uh, talking to council about that sixth deputy. Uh, right now, with it being so cold, crime activity is kind of down, so we want to preserve as much of that budget as we can. Uh, but we do have that ordinance for five or six deputies. I'm not going to move forward with that six deputies until we have that talk with council. But again, I am anticipating that maybe March or April. Uh, anytime council wants to re revisit that discussion sooner, just let me know. We can bring it up. Uh, moving on with the city manager report, uh, our fire to EMS report with our fire chief, Chief Trustee. Mayor, council, citizens, for the month of December, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 95 EMS calls in the city. The division responded to three fire-related calls, 21 good intent or service calls, one hazardous uh, conditions call, and four false alarms. We had three calls answered by mutual aid either by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 being on response. We answered three mutual aid calls to Pike Township and four to Bethel Clark. Our total run count for the year of 2023 was 1,515 runs. The division was selected to receive the 2024 March radio grant from the Ohio Department of Commerce Division of the State Fire Marshal's Office for a total grant value of $17,110.85. This will allow the division to purchase five new handheld radios with speaker mics and a large radio charger. And as always, we still have uh, free smoke alarms in at the station. Just give us a call or stop by. Any questions for the chief? Thank you, fire chief. And moving on with the city manager report, <coughs> fire finance report. I will give the stats for the finance report. Our uh, finance director is out ill, so hopefully she starts feeling better soon. Since this is for the month of December, I'll just receive uh, uh, note that received to dates. So revenue received to date, $9,816,265. Uh, expenses to date, $9,211,746. So when we balance all that out, our statement of cash from revenue and expenses, uh, the ending balance is uh, just over $8 million. She has also has for uh, income, monthly income tax uh, comparison for 2022-23. Um, it looks like uh, this time last year, we are up 3.85%. I want council to note that um, every year we've kind of dropped around 2%, two percentage points, maybe hung around seven, seven, I think last year around five, this year around three. So just keep noticing that decline. What that's telling me is our past collections are starting to catch up and hopefully even out. And then what we're bringing in is just basically almost per se cost of living increases from the year prior. So I do watch these collections. I do kind of analyze, analyze that percentage. As we see that uh, next year, I'll definitely keep an eye on that percentage uh, 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 compared to last year. And we also have the mayor's court. So four totals dispersed for uh, the current month was $4,352 and for the total year, 54366 So again, the mayor's court, what we saw compared to this time last year, has definitely done a much better job by putting um, our parking, our criminal, certain criminal, and then more importantly, the code enforcement tickets through the mayor's court. So we're starting to see the benefit of, of that as well. Uh, that's all for the finance report. So we'll take a motion uh, to accept the finance report and the mayor's court report. Okay, I need a motion to accept the finance report. Move to accept the finance report. Second. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Eggleston and Mr. Green. Mm -hmm. When you're ready. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Chammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Council Vice <coughs> Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. And the motion to accept the uh, court. Move to accept the mayor's court report. Mrs. Eggleston and Mr. Shammy. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Six, seven, zero. Mr. Bridge, in regard to that mayor's court, 
Would you say we made a little bit of money last year after we take our expenses out of what we received? Yeah, I don't have the year end report in front of me. I'm going to say, of course, we did. I think our expenses definitely are under well under what we brought in. Um, I'm curious to see how they're split up. So again, until the year end report's done, I don't want to speak too much on it because I don't see the numbers. But we can clearly see it's done better than what it has in years past. And I think it's just probably going to grow. As we talked, um, we may have to come to council with a permission to possibly move the mayor's court from its current location to something more um, bigger, perhaps this place, because it is starting to get um, standing room only in some cases. That was something we were gonna, probably going to bring up a little later, but uh, Vice Mayor has been at several of those court appearances and consequently we're having standing room only. Hmm. So the possibility, and we'll bring this up later in the meeting, of the possibility of bringing the mayor's court out here. Uh, so it shouldn't affect, I guess the word is too much, of what the rental here versus the rental over at the new place. Yeah, it's a Wednesday night mayor's court every two weeks, so very, very rarely do we have a Wednesday night rented. So so we'll, we'll approach that in later in the meeting. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, we're going to move on with the city manager report. We have the service report with our assistant city manager, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, <clears throat> members of the public. Uh, under your first bullet point, we'll hold off on that as Mr. Bridge will be giving additional information um, for the new shelter under um, informational items. Uh, snow and ice removal. Um, obviously, we are pretty prepared for that. Uh, we've been out uh, all day, you know, Sultan, uh, hitting our intersections, and um, it's going pretty well so far. Uh, temperatures are our biggest issue right now with it being uh, below zero with that wind chill. Uh, private well inspections are ongoing. We have about 20 to go, and part of that 20 are some of the monitoring wells with Speedway. You know, we don't actually have to monitor but we got to get these off our list do a first inspection and then get to tell the EPA okay, we do not have to follow up with those. So we are about done with them. Uh, we are still working on our old high service pump building upgrade project. And under the lead service and water main replacement project, uh, there is uh, legislation before council tonight uh, to keep us on uh, schedule for that project. Under sewer department, they're still performing general maintenance. Uh, just today I received what will be the final draft uh, document uh, for the study, so once I get um, some, dis once I get that finalized, I'll be discussing that with Mr. Bridge, and then we will present council with uh, present that to council formally. Uh, road reconstruction, I really have no updates. Uh, should be other than in the next couple weeks, our manhole adjustments should happen on Falcon. Um, piece of equipment that the contractor had has been broke down for some time, so they've been waiting on it. They have till spring to get it finished, but they're trying to get in and out. Um, let's see, under additional items, uh, under gov deals, there is legislation for introduction tonight on additional pieces, but I can tell you that the uh, sweeper and loader are live right now, so if you're interested in those, uh, you can put a bid on them, and they seem to be decently popular uh, right now, but we still have about six days left on those auctions. And that is all I have in my report. I can entertain any questions on it or anything else within the city. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Kitko? If not. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Moving on to the city manager report and informational items. Um, Rumkey, this may be my last update I do with Cut Rumkey to start to kind of smooth itself out. We do have a few more addresses that are uh, refusing the container, so uh, we'll be sending out another round of letter with those. Should council get any kind of calls at this point in time, they are required to have it. They are living in a single family or a duplex and uh, the contract states that they must have it. They don't have to use the service, but they at least have to sign up for it. Uh, so we're being very communicated with the different service levels that uh, re residents can choose from. Um, most of them have, once they realize they need to have it, it's, it's been a very pleasant experience. Um, but like I said, we still got a few stragglers that we're, we got to take it to the next level to get. So just in case council gets any feedback, they are required to have the service just based off the house they live in. Um, and of course, you can always call me or if you have any questions or get a direct call yourself. Uh, story walk, I, last week went with uh, the library, Beth from the library, we went around and installed the second story walk story. 
So we now have a, the original story walk starting right out here that goes about midway through. And we also have another one starting off Lake that comes down and meets the other one. Still quite a bit of distance between the two. Uh, with the newest installation, they're a little bit more closer together, opposed to further apart. So if the family wanted to do a short walk, they can do a short walk. Um, the story that's in there now is called the Mitten, and the one that's out here now is gonna be switched out. It's called Owl Moon. I don't have the date on that yet, but we have got a lot of positive feedback from that story walk. So again, thank you to council for donating the time to partner with the library on that, because it's just been a great, great draw for our families. Uh, Metronet, we are very excited to announce we have been meeting with Metronet uh, to bring high speed fiber options to the city of New Carlisle. That is something that we've always been asked about, bringing high, feet, high speed fiber to New Carlisle. So Metronet was basically the second one we met with. We also met with Cincinnati Bell and their fiber optic division, but we have not had a meeting with them since. Metronet seems to be the leader in this particular cause. They've already uh, got approved. They put a hub, a trunk, basically a cabinet out on uh, Main Street by Pike Street. And that's with their central connection agency. So we'll be having a communication meeting with them I, monthly. Mr. Kiko is going to have construction meetings with them coming up here. Is those monthly or are those weekly? They're going to be monthly. Monthly as well. Um, as we get the information, we'll, of course, uh, let council know as well. But I also have that listed in our newsletter to let the citizens know <coughs> that soon enough they will be able to sign up and have high-speed fiber. I just got it at my house where I live, and it is a night and day difference, and it is significantly cheaper, and I'm excited for our residents to have access to that. I'm also excited for the city services to have access to that as well. So good, good things are happening when, as far as your fiber optics in the city. Uh, the swimming pool, we have been tasked to start that process. So me and Mr. Kiko had a preliminary meeting with a gentleman, um, gave us some good information. We're gonna be moving on to some more fact-finding information before we bring anything in front of council. I uh, just want to let you know, and I may have brought this up last meeting too, we are working on it. It is just going to take some time to get some stuff to council, but the process has started. Uh, new shelter house information and discussion. So we've been working on this for quite some time now. So what I've done is council has uh, the rental agreement. Uh, so basically we want your opinion on uh, what you guys think of the name. Uh, we have done extensive research with the, with the fees associated with the, rent, the uh, Dillinger Hall, what we're going to call it. Uh, we, in that name, we wanted something that's going to pay homage to New Carlisle. Uh, we thought about Monroe, but we already have a Monroe Meadows coming in. But quite frankly, a lot of people don't know New Carlisle was called Monroe, but they do know at one point in time, John Dillinger visited New Carlisle. So the citizens that we talked about the name with, they've all loved it. We wanted something that's going to be easy for people to remember because we have the Smith Park Shelter House and now we have Dillinger Hall. So the two completely different names, this is a shelter house, that one's more of a hall. So um, we, in the newsletter, the reason I want council's opinion on this is because I have it in the newsletter that we're gonna start writing this on February 5th of 2024. So city resident half day is 200, a full day would be 300, non-resident half day 250, full day 350. It's $100 security deposit, and that is for, um, we don't want anyone to put thumbtacks, et cetera, on the walls, um, so we're gonna be sticklers on that. We have cameras installed in that one. We are installing cameras in this one as well, as you can see right here, uh, to make sure that people follow do follow the rules. Um, so, council, just take a look at that. Let us know what you think of the name and then the pricing, and then we can move on. And again, Mr. Kiko and his department did a really good job of, of area rates to rent an area shelter's house. Any questions? Go ahead. I'm a little concerned having an after criminal. He did rob the bank, didn't he? Yeah. It's history of the city. Got to start somewhere. <laughs> and then we got a building. Isn't there a plaque that announces he got yes. robbed that building down there? So not like we're trying to hide it. Yep. But no, we've, it's, he is a criminal, for sure. Um, what's the rent for the shelter house? 175, maybe. 125, I think. 125, maybe. Maybe a little under half. I don't have it on my head. I so, think yeah. like 125 for non-residents. 75. I, it's very reasonable. Yeah. Very. It's also very basic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, this is an administrative function. We just want to let you guys know this is what we're doing. What's your opinion? 
Any other questions? Would a council like to see it named something else? Personally, I like the name. I do think the price is a little high for most of our citizens, but that's just me. If we underdo it, they're going to go down to Bethel Township. Mm -hmm. So we're, that's why we have to be competitive with Is that area. what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Were there other name options? We thought of like Monroe Hall, et cetera. Just basic no, names. Two you were considering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's also Funston, but nobody knows who he was. Mm -mm. There's a general. It's also too about people to be able to remember, <coughs> remember the two easily, right. separate the two easily. <coughs> so we're always willing to take council's opinion. So if you want to name something else, now's your shot. Is the council okay with those prices, or do you want to see them adjusted? Let's Oh, we're not. We're here. We're talking about the name. The prices are the prices are set because yeah. we did the research. I'm fine with Do you want a motion to accept your? No, no. I just wait. I just maybe just gets everyone's opinion on it. That way, I can just. Gauge. Seems like the general opinion has been go ahead. Unless, Bill, you got any questions? We're more expensive. Yeah, no, no, no. No, actually, this price is the same as one of theirs. This price is the same as the but one at Bethel Township, and ours is newer. But theirs is huge. The, their $500 one is bigger, but I think their other one, their $300 one, is a little bit smaller. Doesn't it have a full kitchen, though? I mean, a big galley kitchen? I, I don't know. I've only been to one. I don't know where the other one is. I think the other one's in Donaldsville. But we, yeah, we have a full, almost kitchen. We can't have any more. Most of the places now don't have kitchens anymore. A lot of more grandfathered until they have to remodel. Go ahead, Mr. Bob. I would say it's a good place to start. You know, see how it goes. And, and get a feel for it and just see. Mm -hmm. Any further comment? Can I have the consensus of the name? Are you okay with the name? I said I like the name. Mr. Lindsay? Fine. Like Mrs. Eggleston? Like Mrs. Mr. Cook? Apparently I'm not voting. You okay with it? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, we'll keep the name. We'll see how the rentals go with the pricing point. If we know that notice, I mean, the goal is to get people in, so we know it's not being rented or people coming back here, then we can look at that pricing. Um, but I think it's a pretty appropriate place to start, for sure, um, given the cost of other places. We even looked at, the Angel looking at Columbus? Because I know she was looking at Columbus like a year ago when we are looking at the current shelter. House. There was probably 20 different places we looked all around the area, small, big. Okay. All right. Permission to move on? Okay. So administration at council meetings, I'm going to hold off that to the next meeting. I'm going to think about it a little bit more, um, but I am going to revisit how we do the administration visiting the council. Um, so let me think about that particular order, and then I will bring it back at the next council meeting. Um, upcoming legislation, uh, ordinance to accept the codification update. Um, hopefully we'll have that here soon. I know they've been working on it for a couple months now. Um, so as soon as we get that, we'll definitely put it in through council. And additional discussion topics. I do not have any, but I'd be happy to entertain. Question. Go ahead, Bill. The MetroNet, any idea what that cost will be to the citizens mm -mm. if they hook up to it? Mm -mm. Will that be part of the discussion? Um, I'm sure they have their set pricing. You can like do different tiers, like 100 megabytes, 500 megabytes. But again, it's just an option. If the citizens don't want to sign up for it, they don't have to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think ours, Mr. Lindsay, at my house is like $80, and we got one of the highest packages, maybe close to 100. <clears throat> okay. These are all going to be underground cables. Some will be, well, if they're underground, like in Twin Creeks area, more than likely, but otherwise, no, they'll be above ground. 
Go ahead. Uh, this is a question, I guess, for Council or for Mr. Bridge. I just had a, a, a citizen that asked me today, they had heard that there's going to be Section 8 or government housing being going in the new developments. Has anybody heard that? Nope. I just told them I would ask if it's some verification. I've, I've not been approached with that, no. no. The, as far as I can tell, the Planning Commission has no word mm -hmm. on that. Because I talked with Steve yesterday, and um, he's not aware of any. Did he say which development? Uh, he thought it was the one on the east side of 235 there. The Orhurt the, the one? Yeah. Well, as I understand it, it's, that's not mm -hmm. what was proposed to council. So I would think that at that point, if they were to go that route, they would have to bring it back before the plan board and poor council, am I correct? Uh, depends. If, Mr. Mayor, if somebody buys a home over there and decides to rent it, if they want to do Section 8, it's up to the landlord. Mm -hmm. And then they have to jump through all the Section 8 hoops, Oops. which is a royal pain. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I seriously doubt anybody will spend that kind of money to buy a home and then put Section 8 in. That would be my They're all individual. My understanding, according to the plans, they're all going to be individual residences, no apartments that was scrapped. So <coughs> Section 8, I would be very surprised if anybody spent $300,000 or whatever on a home and then turned it into a Section 8 to get it tore up. So when you said, when he said they have to bring it back to council, something no. change, and you said no, they is, don't. That, is that the instance that you're talking about, or is there something else? If they, if they change the site plan, like they change roads and stuff like that, utility layout, that would be considered a major change. But he technically didn't have to come back here when he's going to take, set it at Rangel side, now they're single family homes, because the layout really didn't change all that much. It wasn't considered a major change. He just happened to have to come back for his last and final meeting. Mr. Lindsay is absolutely correct. I don't see anyone back there taking that type of house, a new build, and trying to get it converted. It's just not, not going to happen. I think it started from Mrs. Burner wrote a note here, and I agree with her. It started when they were promoting that as rentals on the other side, and those people started running with it. So I'm assuming it maybe started there, um, but I haven't heard anything from the developer. And I honestly don't know if the developer would risk that because you got to put yourself in the in the footprint, the foot of the developer. If I'm building 200 homes of market value of 300,000 plus, and then I'm going to have another 100 set aside for Section 8 housing, then you're going to have a hard time. You possibly could have a hard time selling those market rate homes uh, because of the Section 8 neighborhood. You know, so unfortunately, that's just where we are in a society. But Again, I second what Mr. Lindsay said. He's absolutely correct. I just don't see it happening. If we do hear of it, I would definitely let you guys know. The development cannot set aside anything for Section 8 according to law. That is strictly landlord's prerogative, and they have to, the landlord has to apply for it for a tenant that requests it. Uh, I know that because I've not done it, but I attempted to do it. And they was so ridiculous in what they wanted, I told them to take a fly and leave. Anything and I further. can't imagine it's any better nowadays. This was 25 years ago. OK. You done? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. OK, where am I at here? I guess we're ready for comments from the members of the public. Go ahead, you know. <clears throat> Janelle Zimmerman, do we still give our address? There wasn't a sign up sheet. I'll just give this sheet. Okay, that's, I mean, I don't care, but. I know, yeah. Okay. Um, now, if I can just remember what I was going to say. Um, oh, I know. Because of the, it was such a problem at the last time to 
elect a mayor and everything because the vote just kept coming out the same and the same. And I know they had to do it that way. Is it because of council rules or the city thing or whatever that you just have to keep going over and over until somebody drops out or something? But I'm just wondering, in order to make it much easier, if after a couple of votes they come out the same, why don't they just flip a coin and see which one it's going to be? I just, I don't know. To me, it, it was just ridiculous, just going over and over and over. And I think it causes a lot of tension and dissent in, in council, in my opinion. Maybe not, but it just seems like they ought to have it. If they can't decide, just flip a coin and let it go at that myself. And another thing that's very concerning to me is to there has never your been information. A, okay. I think part of that comes out of the Ohio Revised Code, some with the charter. Uh, the legal eagles probably are the ones that are dictating to us since we are a strong city manager council form of government. Over the past years, the Charter Review Committees have toyed with the idea of having mayor and possibly vice mayor voted on by the citizens. That was always thrown out. It was never brought up at that point. Uh, I don't know whether it would be advisable to possibly put that kind of a charter amendment on for this next time. I know Mr. Bridge and I have had several discussions about the possibility of bringing up the charter amendments this November. Now, whether or not that is still what wants to be done, I don't know whether the, and I have to go back and look, whether the citizens or the charter review committee would have to put that in as a motion. We'd be at the charter Amendment. review, we'd have to meet again. Because the charter review makes a, makes a recommendation to the council, you guys vote on all that. And you say, yes, we want this to go, or no, we don't want that to go. So they'd have to reconvene. Is it in the charter how you do it, or is it rules? It has to be in the charter, I'm assuming. It has to be in the charter. It's not in the rules. No, I agree with you. It is a very cumbersome means of getting to a point. I don't like it any better than anybody else. Yeah. And yeah, I was, I was kind of surprised, actually, that the citizens didn't elect the mayor. But I mean, I don't know anything about how cities do it, because I've never lived in the city. But I just always assumed, just like <clears throat> council, you know, you went in and voted when they had it. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, this way's OK, I guess. But I just think, at the end, it just wasn't working out well, so. In, in the past, there have been some instances that uh, we have uh, been very successful with a minute amount of discussion in electing both mayor and vice mayor. Um, I think it comes down to the fact of who wants it and who doesn't want it and what you can do for the city. Yeah. But we all were elected to do the best job that we could as council persons and as far as I'm concerned, sitting up here in a mayor's position makes me no different than anyone on the other side here. Um, I get assigned the ordinances, I guess, and the minutes. That's as far as my, I guess the word is. Your, your powers go. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else got anything to get me out of this? <laughs> now you're digging a hole pretty good, Bill. <laughs> Neither the charter nor the ordinances say what to do in case of time. Ohio state law says if there's a time of general election, it's settled by the ordinances. But I don't think that would apply here because it was not a time. It just mm. Oh, yeah, I see what yeah. you mean. Yeah. It just failed to make it for the required number of votes. Yeah, yeah. OK, another question I had was with the charter, that committee worked so hard on that for hours and hours and hours. And what's ever become of it? 
No. Sat on it. This sat on it. There's a there's a very step oriented process to get that on to the uh, elect the, uh, the November cycle, and we missed the deadlines for last time because it's such a drawn out process. So we got to start the process over, start what? getting it back on the ballot. They don't have to read meet again. We just have to get it on the ballot. What? I mean, I don't understand what you have to do. I mean, they had. Does the council just have to approve it, or what? What makes it so hard to? I don't have the state code in front of me, but the state requires you to do additional steps. Okay, and they just haven't started those steps, or? No, we'll start them. We just haven't started them yet. But why? How long ago has that been that they finished that? I felt so sorry for him. He brought it. He was all excited. We had this done, and they'd worked for hours and hours and hours, and then. Oh, well, we can't do anything tonight. And it was in 2022. Yeah, it's been two years. That's when they met. You guys did not get done with that until like 2023. And the issue was, you know, is we assumed it was a 90 day before the site election. You had to get stuff to them. But it's well in advance of that. So last year when we started, it was past the 90 days in order to get it to them. So you have to wait this year to get it on for this November 2024. And we approved that they approved their changes in May of 23. Well, I think if I may, um, I was on that and mm -hmm. we did, we went through word by word and it took hours, but the thing is we have to turn it to council and let council read it, understand it and make their changes that they need to make. Mm -hmm. And then 90 days to hand it off to him. So it is really an overly long process. Okay. But I mean, I did the hard work too and I feel bad that it didn't pass, but there's still time and we'll work on that this year for sure, I know. Okay, I sure hope so, because yeah, we gosh, you guys work so hard on that, and it's just, mm -hmm. it's heartbreaking, I think, that it takes so long to get something like that done. So, I guess that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thanks. Janelle, can you say your name and address again, just because the rules of oh, sure. have changed? Yeah. And Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead, Bill. Should I write it on here too? No, because they haven't voted yet. So we'll just have oh, you say okay. your name and address until the change is official. Bill Zimmerman, 219 <coughs> Prentice Drive. Um, been a resident for about almost nine years now. Just love this town. But uh, an unfortunate incident happened at the school the last day of last year where a young boy was attacked and physically attacked and he did not defend or he did not uh, do anything because he has been told by his parents not to ever lay his hands on a woman. And he was attacked by a, a female. And because of that incident, that family has decided that it's not safe for the kids to go to school and they pulled out. But they also pulled out of Nukerla because that's the Habitat family, one of the Habitat families. It was a, a racial uh, incident and that young lady got arrested. Don't know what that outcome is because that's to be determined. But people are not going to come to this town if that blows up the NAACP of Clark County has become involved. The national NAACP has also become involved because of the legal proceedings that may be happening. Just letting you know, this is like a powder keg with a short fuse. We pray that it all comes down. This is a great place and I love this town. I would hate to see the new developments and things that are happening in this city be a problem because of an incident at school because people are not going to bring their kids to that school if that continues to happen. I just wanted the council and the city to become aware of the situation. He was a Navy veteran. The Veterans Association may become involved. I don't know what all is going to happen. He just happened to be a friend of mine that we became friends from the groundbreaking on. And it's, it's, I think it's a sad thing because they have pulled out of the Habitat program being a house in New Carolina. They're going to get a house somewhere else. 
the other family that is on there, and there's two other families coming in for habitat, may be also involved with pulling out because the habitat may not want to work in a community that's not going to help them out. I just wanted for your information to know that that happened. I know some of you are aware of that, but uh, it's just something I, I think that we as citizens, I love this place. I, I, I lived in Tip City for many years. I know what a small community can be. It, and you guys do a fantastic job. I feel safe here. I think 98% of the people, we don't have a problem. We have a lot of interracial uh, people here. We have a lot of Hispanic. The kids at school are bullied. And we, we just need to try to get our, our uh, ducks in a row so that that doesn't happen again. Thank you. Mr. Bridge, would you like to entertain that? You don't want to do that. Okay. Bill, in regards to your comment, there are a few of us on council that, yes, are aware of this situation. The problem being that that happened at Tecumseh, and yes. consequently, that was outside of the city. So I think until we find out what the situation is going to be there, I don't think we really have any grounds on which to stand on. Yeah. Oh, that's you just have to strength. I understand that. I just wanted some people may not know that situation. I just wanted to, so you guys didn't get blindsided later on. It's something that does happen. And I can appreciate that, and I'll be honest with you. I, I think it was a quote unquote backhanded slap that we got dealt when we had nothing really to do with the situation. And I think that maybe uh, Paula Crew is going to have to handle that matter and then we will adjust from there. Anybody else want to chime in? Anything that happens at the school has nothing to bear on this council or with the city. Yes, but the people that may become <coughs> will become affected if they hear that the school is not a safe place for their kids. That's something that the school board, in my opinion, would have to address along with the superintendent and faculty and whatnot at school. When it comes up for funding from the people in town, help support that school, so that's... I understand that. that, and people that's involved and people that wants to be involved need to go to the school board meetings and, and, and uh, voice their concerns with the school board, make the school board and the faculty, faculty, faculty do their jobs and stop the bullying over. They let it continue, is what I'm hearing and have heard. Uh, and it's been going on for years. It isn't nothing new with yeah. the council. Well. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And other than that, anyone else? <clears throat> All right, Ms. Werner, yeah, if you will. I guess we can go to the resolutions and ordinances. Looks like we, for resolutions, we have two. The first one is just an intro. <clears throat> the second one we will have action. So resolution 2024-01R, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 5th. A resolution adopting the New Carlisle City Council rules of council. We have resolution 2024 Dash zero two R introduction public hearing and action tonight a resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the general fund to the street general bond retirement government center and water led out funds of the city of New Carlisle. So moved. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. This is a housekeeping ordinance. After we developed the 2024 budget through the work sessions, um, we had determined that there's some transfers needed 
and this is what we do every year. So a certain amount of funds totaling 410,000 will be transferred out of the general fund to the street fund, general bond retirement, government center, and water fund for get the lead out. Okay, ready to go? When you're ready. All right. Jamie was the second, correct? Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor <clears throat> Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chami? Yes. That passes 7 0. Moving on to our ordinances, the first six are intro only, and the last one will have action. So we have ordinance 2024-01, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 5th. An ordinance authorizing the sale by internet auction of city-owned personal property which is not needed for public use or is obsolete or unfit for the use for which it was acquired. Ordinance 2024-02, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 5th. An ordinance authorizing city-owned personal property which is not needed for public use or is obsolete or unfit for the use for which it was acquired and that has no value to be discarded or salvaged. Ordinance 2024-03, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on February 5th. An ordinance establishing compensation for the Director of Public Service Assistant City Manager. Ordinance 2024-04, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 5th. An ordinance establishing compensation for the finance director. Ordinance 2024-05, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 5th. An ordinance establishing compensation for the city manager of the city of New Carlisle. And ordinance 2024-06E, Introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into a consultant agreement with Choice One Engineering for the water main and lead service replacement project and declaring an emergency. Yes, Mr. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Grimm and a second by the vice mayor. And explanation of this ordinance, we will defer to Mr. Kitko, uh, since this is his project. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Mayor, Council, members of the public, um, we were awarded uh, well over $2 million to uh, get lead out of the old section of town. Um, so one of the first parts of that, uh, once we got the funds, is to do an RFQ. So I did request for qualifications. Choice one came as an engineer, and we just worked on a fee. Um, the fee is $248,000 to engineer this project. Because um, it does, you know, there's going to be uh, miles of main, miles of service line, and a bunch of other things. Um, so the schedule for the funds to be used up is December of 2025. Sounds like it's a long way out, but engineering can take six to eight months. Plus, and construction is a little over a year. So I am requesting council, and it's a reason this is an emergency, is to keep pushing on our side of the schedule so I don't run out of time, whether it's uh, getting ductile iron pipe in because it's delayed or whatever. I just want to make sure that the city did everything we could, keep pushing through, and then if there's anything that is uh, delayed, you know, there might be something I can work out in the end. I can entertain any questions on that ordinance. Any comments, any questions, folks? I have a question. Go ahead. I'm curious, does that mean the streets will be torn up too? Is that pulling everything up and then just discarding it and putting it all fresh in? Um, any of the existing talking? mains will not be abandoned. Okay. Um, so they'll dig right next to that main, they'll lay a new one down, and then they'll take the tap off of um, the one, get it sealed off, and then put a new tap on the new main for a whole new service to that property. Mm -hmm. And then yes, for hopefully not too long, we will have a, an old section of town with where the mains get replaced, there'll be a ditch line of asphalt mm. until we can get a resurface done. But this is just for the survey so they can figure out how to lay the lines. Yes, this is just the survey, construction, and assist me with construction administration, which will be inspection, um, making sure things pass tests, 
and that type of thing. So when we go to the Department of Development for final payment, um, we've met every requirement. Now, are we going to have that money to fix all of that? So right now, we have been, you know, told by estimates that we're close. Now, I applied for this money two years ago. So obviously, there's going to be possibly inflation. And I have been told by the Ohio EPA that they really want us to, well, actually, they're telling me I need to go inside the house. So we're not sure how far this may go, because right now I was just going to the curb stops mm -hmm. with everything. And if they say we're going further, this could be a whole nother project a couple years down the road. Unless the EPA wants to give me, you know, obviously more money. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, folks? Ms. Burner. All right. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. That passes seven zero. Moving on to other business. <laughs> we discuss the uh, acting clerk of council. Is there any further discussion on that? Go ahead. We can do that. We can do that. Um, anything further on that other than that? I didn't hear what Councilman Brim said. Put a cough without a call to the community. Much like something on Facebook, I would assume, uh, you know, another application on the city website. Going on down uh, city council retreat. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, this city has been operating pretty much on a as is, when is, and however. The idea behind the retreat possibly is to develop a long range plan so we kind of put some plans together on where we're going, how we're going to get there, and maybe doing business in a little better way. Um, I think Mr. Bridge has contacted somebody in regard to a uh, facilitator. Uh, do we have any kind of a time frame? That's all on you guys. Let me know when you want to have it. I mean, you got. I mean, I would do it like in two weeks. You know, then you got to let me know where you want to have it at. I need a lot more guidance. So it's up to me. We're going down to Northern Kentucky and we're getting a conference room and we're going to hash this out, like like most cities do. This primarily would be a probably an all day affair. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Mr. Bridge would like to bring in the uh, administrative departments to give mm -hmm. council some kind of an idea of what they want to see in the upcoming years. And that way we can possibly sit back and, and develop a plan of action. I would bring the key administrators, me and Howie and Colleen, just so we're on the same page administratively. Um, I'll probably be doing the talking and leading the administrative side of things, but it's always nice to have the two key administrators there, especially when you're talking about policies and long-range plan. Are we, we, and I don't know, I know Mr. Bond works, I know Mr. Shammy works, uh, the rest of us are kind of free-based. Uh, I don't know whether we'd want to set up a Saturday to do this. How quick are you looking to do this? Does it have to be on a Saturday? Can you do like half days or is, can anyone leave work or? Well, with both the two gentlemen on the end working, I would say that, that that's gonna be up to them to take a day off if we do it during the week. Uh, probably the five of us have no problem with doing it during the day. Depending on the day. Some of well, us have lives besides council, so. <clears throat> What's council thought? How quick are you looking to do this? 
my feeling is within the next two months, am I somewhere near a, a uh, appropriation I, here? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not, but as you guys, I don't know what you guys want to discuss. You know, my concern for administration is, as we discussed in the meeting, you need to have some committees formed because we're making most of the decisions for you. Um, so I think committees need to look at. I think there needs to be a good amount of time spent on the form of government we have and what's council roles and what the administrative roles are because there's some definitely overlapping there. Um, long range plan, comp plan needs to be looked at. Now that's something you don't have to tackle into your um, retreat because I already got, we're already gonna probably start budgeting that for a comp plan redo in 25 and that's a whole other company. So I think a general discussion of what a comp plan is and how we use it to do our job would be good to council to understand. But as far as changing that thing, we're, that's a whole other contract, a whole other company come in and look at things from top to bottom. It might be the same guy who does this because he's 27 years in local government experiences. Um, so I think maybe what we need to have is coming up with the next or one or two meetings is council needs to maybe get a list of what needs what you guys want what you guys want out of it and then i take that back and i work with pete on it and then we you know kind of take it from there because since we're starting from scratch there really is no template to follow for us another thing i can do is maybe ask mr bales if he can come to a meeting and have a short discussion at the podium with you guys about his experiences what he thinks that's also an option too um but those are the key things we're worried about in administration the lack of committees and then everyone knowing the former government and respecting the former government. And now that you have a contract with city manager, that also needs to be discussed as well about the ins and outs of that. So I think there's some low hanging fruit we can get. And then you guys have a discussion about what you guys want to see out of it. And then we take it from there and we build something that's, that's beneficial. I don't want to waste anyone's time. That's the key. Does council want to think on this and come up with a dates or dates that they would be available by the next council meeting? And then if you would like to have that gentleman stop in the next council meeting and, and give us a pre-up. I think we should have our ducks in a row a little bit and then bring them in. Okay. That way we can, he'll, I'll send them the stuff early, this is what council decided on, this is what we kind of think. Then he maybe takes a look at that and then comes back, opposed to him coming back and then we tell him what we want and then it's a back and forth. This is my opinion. But well, we got to start somewhere, as we're getting at. Well, this is my thinking. We've been kicking this thing around for five years. Yeah. Years, and I, I, I think we need Four. to get, it and get off, yeah. get on dead center here. I hate to take a whole day, particularly you gentlemen at work, but I don't know any other way to do it. If we were to do it in the evenings, we'd tie up three or four hours at least, and we'd probably spend, what, two to three days? Well, another thing to do, too, is we can do half, like a half day, half day here, half day there. We can do a local, like Evans Retreat out there, so that we're not driving far, you know, so. As long as I have a little bit of uh, advance notice. notice, I can probably, until we get to about April 1st, I can probably turn it out. But once about April 1st starts, we get very busy in our business just because of the nature of the time of year. So I've got a little window of time here where I can set a day aside. Um, How about you, Chris? About the same. <clears throat> hey, I? Maybe I should, maybe we'll look at maybe doing something like a hybrid where it's like a day and an evening, like a three to seven. Would that benefit people's businesses a little bit more? Mr. Lindsay, does that help your schedule? Or not? Depends really? on the day and I've got stuff scheduled through July already. So it just depends on the day. Okay. Well, you can, you can let your council come back to you with some ideas on a date and then I'll wait till you uh, deal with the council on that and then we'll talk to Mr. Bales. Well, let's put together, try and put together some dates and then possibly for the next council meeting and then we'll, we'll work from there, I guess. Okay. Saturdays are go for Mr. Shammy, Mr. Bond. Until we hit April 
depends. That depends. I, I Saturdays can, are tough too. Saturdays are good with me. I can always move stuff on Monday's a Saturday. Probably the best day for me. Mondays would be a better day for you. How about Chris? Same here. Monday. Mondays. Mondays are better. Yeah. Bill, how about your schedule? I mean, would Monday suit you better than? I mean, one of the council meetings on a Monday could be a retreat. Right. Well, I was thinking maybe the second or the fourth. If we do it on a council night, then yeah, afternoon would, for the most part, would work. I might have well, to make we'll come up with some kind of dates for the next meeting and go from there. <clears throat> Going on renovations to the Smith Park Shelter House. There have been a little bit of discussion about uh, putting a platform in here and raising council up and then a vinyl type curtain being put here to wall off the council section so that the rest of it could be rented out as needed. Council chambers would not be affected. In doing that, we looked at the fact that we can't do it from this end because of that door. So if we were to put a vinyl curtain in here, we would block off that exit. So in thinking, we would have to move everything just the opposite of the way it is toward the other end. Also, there is talk that since the Mayor's court is having standing room only. The fact of having them out here also on every other Wednesday, I think it is, mm -hmm. every other Wednesday, by utilizing the same platform and the possibly the same setup as what we have, getting them out of that little hole in the wall downtown. Also, I had inquired of Mr. Uh, Bridge and Mr. Kitko, for that matter, of the possibility of getting a better sound system in here. So I think we're looking at that, and I gave Mr. Bridge some information tonight that we might be able to do that fairly reasonable uh, without incurring a whole lot of cost. Uh, I don't think the building of that platform, other than probably uh, two floors and three three quarter inch plywood, would take that much to do. My only concern was that if we do that, I think we need a ramp coming up on one end of that in case some member of council would happen to be in a wheelchair mm -hmm. rather than a step up. This would keep us from being ADA compliant. Um, that way you can look down and out on the people. And that's the key. We don't want to look down on the people. Yeah. We are no better than okay. First off, those people. Most, most have... council dioceses are elevated for most people. That's the standard. On top of that, too, when you're a magistrate or in the court, the, the, may, the magistrate is supposed to be higher than the people he is judging. That's nice. That's, it's not, that's just how it is. Okay. It's not my so the So you, this is the first I've heard of any of this, so uh, I don't know who's been talking about it. The, uh, <coughs> so you want to put, what, have Mr. Kitko's crew build this thing or have outside people build it or I don't know what would it be shaped like our tables are now and you plan on being in a wheelchair anytime soon you never know in my case <laughs> things need to be accessible no I get kicked in the shins too much longer and that might be sooner than you think uh, but I don't think Mr. Kitko's yeah crew would have the time in order to take away from their duties we may have to we would we would look at the we would look at all alternatives 
So, I so don't want you, to put counsel on. Excuse me, ma'am. Sorry. So, would are you talking about a platform and putting a these tables up there or a regular no, diocese the, the or normal, what? Like a legit diocese that count, like regular council members sit at. Okay. So would these these would go away? So it'd just be something that's a lot more professional looking, opposed to the world seeing this when they look into your government meetings. They would actually see a council that's actually sat at a dais in a, an appropriate way. So it'd be done permanently. Would done it'd be done in a nice way, but not permanently because it's if we ever build, we can hopefully pick it up in pieces and take it with us. The uh, so I'm just going to assume you've already got some figures on this. No. No. Oh. No, this is all talking state. I figured you all been talking about it. Yeah. it would, you would have something to go with. Any idea what this would cost off your top of your head? No, that's why council needs to talk about it, and then they make a motion to direct administrative staff, which is why we're here talking about it. So if I council know as a whole is interested in learning more about it, then you make a motion for us to look into it. I know other cities, not that I really care what other cities do, but Mr. Bridge is correct. The magistrate is supposed to be higher than the people he is judging, for lack of a better word. Uh, personally, I don't have a problem with putting a diocese back there, elevating it. I assume it's going to have microphones and stuff with buttons. Okay. Shut the mics off. Hopefully. Uh, so. I'm good with that. I mean, if we're going to move the court over here, then we need something for the for the magistrate to be sitting elevated, and not <coughs> equal, because the magistrate is not equal to the person he's looking at or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I'm totally against it. Totally. I don't particularly feel. <laughs> personally, uh, or to spend public money to elevate myself. So. I think you guys are looking at the term "elevated" a little too literally. It's not. It's not like it's not. A, it's not an indication that you're above them. That you're usually there to help out with your voices they carry, and then it's basically for the people sitting at here. These people who are all level to be able to see you guys. Because right now when we have a packed house, you get different size heights, people coming in here and they're looking at you at the same level field. So it has nothing to do with literally being above, so it has to do with the overall aesthetics and movement of human voice and then how we look at people. So that's why people are usually elevated. I would like to see maybe the judge elevated and, and maybe not uh, so much. Uh, I like the idea of the judge being at a podium or something like that. And I know at um, Clark, what is it, Bethel Township, they have the little podiums that sit on the table that makes them appear special or whatever. I don't, I, I too am against the elevation, but I understand the process and I understand the thinking of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, so it's something we definitely wouldn't want to live here though, right? Not permanently. What and the fireplace is there, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. the, we, we discussed yeah. the fireplace, yeah. the fireplace, but these have never been, as it's far as I can remember, have not They're just been for decoration. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know whether they can be. Yeah. I think they're just decoration. decoration. They're, they're sealed. Oh, they're sealed, so mm -hmm. that took care of that. So, Mr. Mayor. Uh, go ahead, Bill. Uh, so these could be removed. Uh, I don't know if we want to remove them because, like I said, if the diocese, if we ever move, would, would cover we, them anyway. We would, uh, well, they would, but we would t pick the diocese up and move, and then we'd want that to remain. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, like, if example, five, ten years down the road, we build a city building from the ground up. We have a di we have a council chamber in there. We're just hopefully be able to take this apart in pieces and take it over to the new place. Seems to me like the majority of council is against it, so I don't know. That's on you guys from an administrative standpoint. When we're on the verge of growth, 
and we got people looking at us, developers looking at us, citizens watching council meetings, future citizens watching council meetings, and they see this. I think it's we not, it's not a it's not a good look. It's not a professional look. It, it says that your city's antiquated and aging. I think we do need to do I, I something think, yeah. to to uh, increase the image. Thank you. Mm -hmm. no, I think it gets across the idea that we're real people. I agree. The same as them. The only difference between them and us, we got elected to a position. That's your opinion. I talk to developers. I have my opinion based off the facts I have. The only, if I may. Go ahead. The only other body that I know of that sits at tables is Bethel Township, unless recently they've got a diocese, but I don't think they have. Uh, Tremont City, uh, most of your little villages, the cities all have a diocese. Uh, even Tip City, I believe, has a diocese. I know Vandalia does. Uh, Troy does, Huber does. All of them around us does. Mm -hmm. And the raising would be like a foot, six inches, not anything. Yeah, they're drastic. not. They're not. We're they're not going to be sitting like up on the ceiling. Like this. It's just. It's just elevation for yeah. people in wheelchairs or et cetera to be able to see. At the it. most, it would be two steps if it's that. Sometimes it's only one step. Uh, I've, I've been in. I've been to some dioceses. It's had three steps, and I think, where am I going to heaven? You know, but. I know Inglewood, they have two steps, I think, up to theirs. It's real nice, you know. What does Enon have? They got a real nice one. Are they, are they step, you've been to Enon's? You've been to Enon's, you've been to Enon's. Do they step or are they go ground level? Anyone remember? remember? Seems like it's too low. They are level? The city commissioners even meet at tables. They have a diocese. Do they have one? They do. They know they don't use it because the, the, uh, they meet, in my opinion, behind closed doors and then they come out and they have their five minute meeting and they vote on everything that they've already discussed, in my opinion. Oh, and that little room. So things they do. Mm -hmm. I do think we should and, look a little more professional. I, I do. Now, I, I think they should use that. a diocese over at the county, but they yeah. don't. They do if they have a lot of people going to show up. I have been told that. I've never seen them use it. And I agree with Mrs. Wright. We should look a little more professional than tables with black tablecloths on, whatever these things are. Go ahead, Ms. Abelson. And I think we, we need to look more professional. Uh -huh. And if it's going to help with the acoustics in this room, that would be well, that, okay. That's a plus because most of the time you can't hear what people are saying. And <clears throat> then we can just, you know, put up a curtain or something that can block it off when we run it out. Hopefully more than a cloth curtain. Maybe one of the folding grounds. Well, it would be like a folding So you can lock it out yeah. because yeah. That was what okay. we were talking about, some type of a folding type vinyl curtain that would, mm -hmm. I don't move a wall or something. You all have come in here time after time and we've had to sit down in a chair that has had Bubblegum on it. food or something else all over it. Yeah. And I think that council needs to kind of pull back and, and get their stuff in a area that we don't have to do that. And if we're going to rent this one out, uh, then I would see no problem in, in designing this one to suit our needs, the court, whatever. The other thing I want to see is bring that podium up to one end of the council chambers. Uh, I think that in having that podium back there, we're kind of defeating the purpose in that person not responding to the audience or not looking at the audience when they're giving a statement. The same thing with they're not, they're looking at us when they're back there. But again, with the acoustics in here, it's, it's a hell of a job, pardon my expression. They're supposed to be looking at us. They're supposed to be addressing you. 
But not you can't the, hear them. Not the council member, not the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Another reason, too, why there's a possibility of it need to be raised is because we don't know if, the, if a, 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 a carpenter or something come in here and they look at it. We don't know if we're going to have this be able to come out and wing this much. It may block this door. It may block that door. It may block something over there. So one of the designs we may look at is having a row up here and another row here. So we could have some places for some administration to sit in your clerk or council. And since we're working with something like this opposed to this, we may have to look at this. But we'll have, if you guys take make the motion for us to look at it, we'll clearly give you options. You're not just have one and out. Because now we talk about it, Mr. Cook, it may be better to keep it on this side if we move forward with it. Because if it's on that side, more people are going to be using that bathroom and trying to get out this emergency door. Does that make sense? <clears throat> but you could bring your table down that wall there. I'm just so more worried about people like on camera. This. I'm more about people getting on the camera. So the camera's back there facing you guys, and that door's going to be faced. So anytime someone gets up and goes to the bathroom, they're going to walk in front of that camera view. See what I'm saying? Because the camera's going to be facing you guys that way. Camera could be over at this angle like it is, just reverse it. It wouldn't catch that door as much, I don't think. Mr. Kitko, have you got some thing in your mind? No, it is just going to come down to drawing out it a couple different ways. I mean, no, I really don't until something's put on paper. Well, let's let's do it this way. Is it the general consensus that we come up with some numbers? look at this thing and then we can make a final decision from that i'd say come up with some numbers and maybe an idea of what it's going to look like so that all right this may be a loaded question do you guys have any idea of what dollar amount you don't want to exceed on this Tell you what, think about the, that for next course, week. I don't want to say this. Are we talking dollar amount for the diocese and moving it? Are we talking dollar amount for the sound system? Total. The whole nine yards. Yeah, yeah it, it would be that. the diocese, the, the mics that stay permanent. You know, they're not having to roll up. <clears throat> Some of these are starting to get staticky. Camera possible earpieces, um, acoustical panels that would just be mounted, that would be a solid color or something like that, to absorb sound, yeah. Mr. Mayor, I think, in my little opinion, we should direct the city manager and administration to look into this, come back with a figure and a couple of plan drawings, not drawings, but sketches or whatever. I don't want to spend money on an architect for this until we absolutely have to, if we have to. I think our staff is smart enough to put a sketch together. Uh, I know the city manager is, I've seen him draw before. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, we can't calculate the, uh, and then see what numbers we're looking at, what type of design we're looking at, and go from there. Mr. Bridge, you had a thought. So we're going to have some professional help to at least get the quote. Well, not so much a full well, architect, like, like a carpenter or something like thing. And then we can determine if we can do it in-house or not. Well, um, we don't have, I don't have this. I want to at least quote the numbers to be relatively accurate by a professional. But I'm not going to go hire a $50,000 architect to do it, for sure. We've got so, the yeah. PM Ricks. You've got Alex Ashball. Uh, I don't know whether Murphy is still in business. No, he died. Okay, he's gone, uh, and I don't think Bobo would do this. No. And uh, PJ, PM Ricks is so busy, I doubt he'd have time. And he's no. really expensive. I have, is that what the rest of council wants to do? Is let going me, Let me get something straight. Okay. We want to put up a divider so we can have council meeting and rent this part out. No, no, not at the same time. The curtain would be to separate when we are not here so that we don't come in here and sit in a chair that's been used by people who have rented this shelter house and got food all over time in and time out. So they're only going to be renting half of the shelter house? They're going to be reduced by this much, however we take, yes. 
that restroom would be inaccessible? No. No. Uh, All restrooms would be accessible. It would just be the one end to where the table would just stay unoccupied during rentals. So everything could stay permanently um, oh, up and never have to be taken down. And we want to put a bathroom for acoustics. Do what, sir? We want to put up baffling for the acoustics. Yeah, I mean, well, that's part of the whole sound improvement. That's going to destroy the charm of the uh, shelter house. It'll... Well, you guys have got a tough decision to make. I, I, Mr. Mayor. Because I don't know where else you, you, I mean, you continue on having here and the acoustics are bad and that gives a bad image. Another okay. thing too, we talk about maybe asking a fire chief. I got his solution. Place. I think the manager's looking for a motion for direction. I think we need to make a motion if we're gonna do it. Have him come back with some numbers and plans or an idea, a sketch or something, and let us know what we're looking at before we decide to do this or not. I, and, and I agree with you, Bill. You go ahead and make the motion, I'll second it. I'll move to make the motion. I was going to say, he hasn't technically said it yet. <laughs> what is the motion? <clears throat> I'm, I make the motion to direct the city manager or administration to, or whoever he appoints, to look into the cost of a diocese, look into plan options, look into the acoustics, the sound equipment, the curtain. Did I forget anything? You sure? Did you say, say I got it. Sound, got it. sound equipment. Sound. Do we need a new camera? New and camera equipment. Uh, <clears throat> pretty much whatever we need to do what what he is talking about, what we've been talking about at that end of the building with the curtain that comes across, the room, room divider, so to speak, that is locked to keep people out of our area so we don't come in and find things on our seats. And I'm assuming I'm going to amend my own emotion because I don't have a second yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Also, to get us some decent chairs to sit in. Yeah, you guys would be permanently so no one could mess with your head. Right, with our chairs. Right, that's more has to do with the equipment that's back there and speakers okay. and stuff like that. Okay. So if somebody <coughs> wants to second that, then. Whichever. Who have? Got three of them, pick one. Four of them, maybe. I don't tell know. me, Mayor Cook, who's the second? Yes. Who's the second? You have to tell her. I didn't. You? You? Okay. All right. Go ahead and call the vote. Councilman Grimm? No. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? No. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. That passes five to two. All right, moving right along. Sometime back, we used to have coffee with city council about every three months. Oh, I forgot, and donuts. I would like to see that started again. Um, what's council's thoughts on that? This was a I don't know, what was it, a Saturday morning? Yep. We had coffee and donuts, and the citizens could come in and talk to council if they had a problem, or just come in for coffee and donut. I think it was well worth when we were doing it. Uh, Fire Chief, can we have it at your place? Excuse me, sir, can we have it at your place? Agree. Coffee and donut? Oh, there we go. Oh. I agree. So what do you want to do? You want a motion on that? The council has to decide as a whole what they want to do, so yeah. I haven't heard many complaints. Right. Go ahead. I think it's a good idea, even if people Sorry. Don't we're making the gesture. Freeze on them. We're making ourselves available. <laughs> and the citizens appreciate that, too. 
and you like the donuts. And <laughs> so I, I have a question. Go ahead. As for the city manager, <coughs> will you be attending these? I would prefer not, but it's kind well, of how are we going to get those donuts if you don't come? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got cars? No, I'm happy to attend. It's not my idea thing to do on a Saturday. As long as it's not college football season, I'm good. Pardon me, sir? As long as it's not football season, I'm good. <laughs> and I'm free on that Saturday, so. And it's not at 7 o'clock in the morning. So. So we do this at the firehouse or at the we do it here. place here. or here? here? We could, depending on what's. Would council mind having at the fire stations? I think it's a two kills two birds with one stone. One, it's a, we had it's a, a smaller, areas. more intimate place. But the two, it gets our citizens in to see your fire department because it's levy, it's levy oriented. So we like that. If, if the fire chief didn't mind if we use his facility, asked him, but it's my decision. I already asked him. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> we got it. It would be courtesy to ask the chief if he was would care. Courtesy. He's good. You know, I, you I, want I, a motion on that? <clears throat> what date you guys having it? Quarterly. You want about the January, February. You do them once a quarter. In March. Mm -hmm. well, that part. I'd probably make it closer to March so you have a better chance of the weather not being horrible. You know. Whenever. Fire on chief. Saturday. Going on March at your place. Yeah. Any Saturday? No, March. No, we have some things in February for the baseball signups, but not March. No, Good. nothing in your. Okay. So he's free in March. Let me see what my schedule is in March. I'll get my personal calendar. Last year, I think you had one in March and one in July, and you had it at the farmers market. Farmers market was a yeah. pizza event, and that yeah. one was a, that was really fun. Yeah, we had, had that was a good time. Um, and we gave out a lot of pizza. Um, so March, I'm not available on the 9th, 23rd, or the 30th. So that's either the second or the six, second or the 16th. 16th sounds good. Sixteenth. Fire Chief, will you check your calendar? Check your calendar for March sixteenth. We're good. How many people show up for this event? I know that I get it. Does the entire council show up for it? Should. No. But Bill can show up. Well, because they, like the, they like the donuts and the pizza. <laughs> Do you know how much of a hassle it is to get all those donuts, let alone specific donuts, Janelle? But for you, I will, because you come around and you, you paid your dues here. Okay. So regular cake donuts? I'll get you six oh, for yourself. Cake donuts? No. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> now, Bill's Donuts has been sold. We all know this, right? But they kept the recipes from what I'm hearing. Have you checked it? Mm -hmm. Not good? Yuck. Well, Bill's is in my in their defense. I tried a donut I never had with it before, so I don't know. I only get a, a blueberry cake donut or a pretzel donut. Try something that you've had before and see if it's different. It's a donut. It's still gonna be good. Yeah, no doubt. Not all donuts are good. Yeah. Jim's donuts aren't as good. If as we, good. we we'll just try Bill's. We'll like Bill's. We'll go back to Jim's. Yeah, that's true. Mean and Van Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would eat their donuts. Did we? Have we come up with a date yet? 16th, the if 16th. everyone's available. What time? It was 9 o'clock. 10 sounds great. Boy, I hope Way 9 better. is. I, I'm not a morning person. It's 9. <laughs> about 1. 10 sounds, 10 sounds more appropriate. 10? 10 to 12. 10's okay. 10. 10 to what? Noon? Yeah. What did we say? 10 to noon? Okay. All right, March the 16th in the noon. So for the one, like Mrs. Wright and Mr. Shammy, we'll get the donuts. I'll bring coffee, juice, relatively low cost of it, but it's a good time. And we usually have donuts left over. How much donut did I get last time? We had three got, dozen? You had two or three dozen. Uh, three dozen, I think, or four dozen. Well, one year, one year they didn't last. You had four boxes. I think boxes. the first year we had it at mayor's, the mayor's courtroom, it didn't last. Yeah, you had two boxes, and I think you can get two dozen in a box. So I think you had four dozen. So four? I think it was what we had. So should we go ahead and schedule June's also and get the other? I like where your head's at, yes, because we can start on that one, too. So 
June one? Do you want to do a farmer's market one? That's what I would want to do. But we could so do, do, do we have the farmer's market date yet? I don't, but it's usually every Saturday. Well, when do they start? June 14th after 15th. June 14th or 15th? About the 15th. To the 15th. Be the middle should of June. Be a, Farmer's market should be open by then. I think it opens at eight. It's either starting or just now starting. Yeah. Uh -huh. We could just do it. We can name it ten to leave and we find out it's a week later, we can move it. And then we'll have to a fall one. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Didn't you guys do something for the you guys didn't do anything for fireworks last year, did you? You didn't have an event before fireworks, so you did uh -huh. no, forget. No. We can't. Hmm. We can't up there. What did we have around fireworks last year? I thought there was something that we did around fireworks time last year. Not the day of the event, maybe a couple weeks before or after. It could have been the fireworks been market that. thing because I think fireworks was a few days before Fourth of July. Was that the pizza one? Like the third Saturday of it was a special farmers market work, event yeah. they had that work? night. It was like. That works great. Oh. What does council think work. about September 21st? Uh, we said on June 16th. Yeah. Oh. Let me write these down. So 316, right? No, it's the 15th of June. 315 for March? Yeah, it's the third weekend of the month. And then 6th, June what? I'm sorry. 16th? I don't know. I'm it's in September. 15th on my calendar. 16th? 15th. 15th. Yeah, 15th and June. then, Mr. Lindsay, you said in fall what? 21st, of September. It's Hold again on. the third Saturday. It's the third Saturday. Try to Hold keep on. some uniformity to it. And we're at different places. Preferably this time, so people might feel comfortable in different. Places. I will not be available on that Saturday on the 21st. It's my 14th? birthday weekend in September. 14th. Or you guys can fly without me for one if it comes out to it, but. We fly without you. Yeah, because I'd be a pizza. Where are you flying to? Taking a plane, or are you just oh, flying? I'm, I'm getting out of town. <clears throat> but I'm saying if I can't be at that one, it's just Domino's because it's a warm event, farmers market one. So it's just yeah. right there. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know what you guys are doing for this. Uh, June fifteenth is that farmers market or it should yeah, be? Yeah. Market. So what? What's what's what are you doing one in September? You doing another farmers market? Is it going on that late? It on the usually 21st? is. It usually yeah, is. And you get a lot of traffic there. It usually does till heritage. Yeah. Well, that would be the last one then in sep in September. So farmers market heritage, for the fifteenth. Farmers market for the twenty. The following weekend, or on the fifth, is that correct? Mr. Lyra, Heritage of Flights, the uh, first weekend of October? Yeah, it's like fourth or fifth. Or we could do Heritage of Flight and have a booth, possibly. Yeah, I'm not available during Heritage of Flight. So we got 315, 615, 921. You want to do one in the winter? It's not no. that out. If it ain't warm, I ain't being there. <laughs> Unless it's inside with heat. Well, that would be probably. So is the no, 21st going to be pizza or well, what? What we should do with that one? We should schedule our town hall meeting because it's towards the end of the year and then have bring people in, get them in with Well, that's food. the other thing I was going to bring up. We've not done the town hall meeting from last year. Not do we late. want to do one? It's too late. Well, I'll just do my opinion. Just do, do the 2024 one at the end of the year to satisfy this year. If not, then let's do it. We'll what be do doing you think two. about the uh, Mid fall and not getting into the December area. Oh, I don't care with that. That's fine with me. That's that's to you guys. If we do mid fall, we can maybe work the budget in there. So we usually do the budget around. I think last year we got started on it a little late, but or we can just have a normal council and donuts and not overcomplicate it. Let's do that. Well, we can look at these dates and see what we want to do. Okay, so. Are we holding off to do the la the fourth one? Because I, I, I think it'd be a good idea to just do town hall and coffee and whoever. Coffee and donuts or coffee and pizza, because it'd be an evening meeting at that point in time. So coffee and pizza, or soda and pizza. Are you looking at December meeting. for this one, for the fourth one? Well, I don't care when you guys have it, but what, what I'm saying is if we got to have a town hall in 2024, it'd be a good opportunity to just have this, the camp, uh, council and donuts or council and pizza, followed by the town hall meeting because more people will hopefully show up. And that town hall just has to be done in 2024 at some point in time. But if we're gonna do 2024, we want to make it towards the end of the year, that way we can recap 2024. Does that make sense? So we just do it at a regular council meeting. I mean, that's the town hall, so it's gonna be a- well, It can be a regular, regular council meeting, it can be a town hall meeting. 
Does it be the second or the sixteenth of December? Dude, let's not do the sixteenth of December. A lot of people go out of town for Christmas. Yeah, It'd be the first, first meeting in the first meeting in December, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Let's let's go back to November and pick a November day for the town hall. And Fourth preferably, the I think not at council. Mm -hmm. We already can't get people to come to council, so let's have something that will encourage them to come to the town hall. Get rid of the YouTube. That would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Have that one at the new shower. That would be a good idea. It's a good idea. Oh, uh, we should have the yeah. We might have the first one. Yeah, you know, first one. Yeah, you know, the first one. Maybe we can have it. Too. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Either. Yeah. Fire chief, you've been kicked out. We're going to the new shelter house. Thank you. Is he even there? No. When in November? No, the, the, the one in March. March. Is the council be... okay with that to move it from the fire station to the new shelter? Oh, in March. Yeah, the other one in March that morning. In. Well, you could show them what the price. Is well, to block that out because we haven't. It's not rented yet, so it's blocked it out. September yeah. is the farmers market. Right? So three fifteen, new shelter house. June, June and September uh, thing will be at the farmers market. So now we're back to the town hall. Right. June, September, farmers market. Well, let's just pick September twenty first, the town hall then. I think it's too early in the year. You think so? Yeah, because we'll we won't have much to read. All right. Because the town hall, Ms. Wright, will re recap the previous year. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So sometime in November, I'm good for... 18th? Oh, no, the first one's on 18th November. You all decide when they're going to be, and I'll show up. <laughs> Definitely before Thanksgiving, so... I think my chili cook-off's on the 9th, so... I'm only free the 16th, really. <coughs> November, I'm looking at. November. Are we all set on what we're doing? I'm good at 16th. Oh. We good to the 16th of November? 16th of November? Yeah. For town hall? For town, oh, that's on Saturday. Saturday, no. You want to do that? We can't do that on Saturday, can we? Town hall? I mean, I prefer not. I don't have yeah, it should be during the week. Should it? Yeah, probably. How about the 12th? Let's do the town hall on the 16th, on the 18th. On the 18th? Yeah. Right before right Thanksgiving. It makes sense to me. Yeah, well, we have a council meeting. No, uh, on the 18th. We, yeah, we normally do it. The, All right. Our council meeting. How we did it in years past, if the, we started the town hall meeting 30 minutes before the regular meeting. That's what we did before. Really, I mean, honestly, we, are you doing a satisfying your charter? You can literally just name one council meeting, a town hall meeting, and you're done. We're doing that at 6. No, it's at 5.30. I'm saying they're all at 6. <coughs> at 5.30 then, the town hall? Can everybody make it at 5.30? On the, this is the 16th? <coughs> November 18th. November the 18th. <laughs> so 5.30, town hall. 6 p.m. regular council. Okay. Mr. Berner, have you got all those dates in? I don't think so. <coughs> the town, the, okay, so March 16th, 10 to 12, at the new shelter house, there will be coffee and donuts. Yep. June 15th, from 10 to 12, coffee and donuts at the farmer's market, or pizza. Which one is that? Pizza. Pizza. All right. And September 21st is the farmer's market again, 10 to 12. Yeah. What time is the market open? 10. Nine. Thank you. If we're doing pizza. We want to, didn't we do it in the afternoon? We did yeah. it later. A little bit later. I say like pizza for breakfast. There was like noon to two, <clears throat> wasn't it? Around lunchtime? I think so. We have donuts mm -hmm. in the morning and pizza. Is that what it was? Yeah, because we were there all day. Yeah, you were. So I'll get donuts and pizza for that day. Well, hold on. I'm not there, so good luck. How are you getting donuts? So you have to cross that bridge. Pizza's easy. Maybe we should do like muffins or something. Do you want all the way down to Centerville? <laughs> place instead of donuts from out of town. So. 
June and September is what? Ten to two. Okay. And both at the farmers market, and then November eighteenth, which is the day of our regular regularly scheduled council meeting, we will have a town hall starting at five thirty. Mm -hmm. All right. Got it. Yay. Anything else on the coffee and donuts and pizza? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, anybody got anything open for, for a discussion on city-related business? Or have we talked ourselves out? <laughs> All right, and I guess I need a motion to adjourn in executive session. Move to for uh, employment and compensation of public employees. Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn to executive session to discuss the employment and compensation of public employees. Second. Uh, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Count Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Pass the 7 0. Take a five minute recess and then go into executive session. Okay. We've got a motion on the floor. Do I hear a second? Peggy seconded it. Peggy. All the vote. Uh, Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. <coughs> Councilman yes. Vice Mayor Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to direct the city manager to send out us whatever he wants to send us on the 50 cent step raises. <laughs> sir. I have does a that, motion and a second. That, you, know what, you, know what, you know what we're talking about. Thank you for that. Bigness. Second? Yeah. yeah. Can we? Yeah, for okay. wastewater and, and yeah, uh, wastewater and water treatment only for the steps. I got you. Okay. Well, uh, Kathy wanted that in the motion, so and I agree with her. All right, Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Yep, we got two of them. Pick uh, one. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. 7 0. You are adjourned. <laughs>